All right, a few weeks ago, I was watching a George Benson interview. George Benson is a great guitarist. And uh, so one of the things he said was that he would try to learn a hundred things a day because if he learned a hundred things, he might remember 10 and he might, he might bring some of those out. And if he was playing a gig later, he might remember a different 10. So he would try to learn a hundred things. So that's something that I kind of just kind of had in the back of my mind. Um, and it just kind of popped out right now. And I'm, so I'm thinking I'm going to try to see if I can learn a hundred things right now before the end of my practicing today. I'll try it today. And if I like it, I'll try it again tomorrow. But I'm going to try to come up with a hundred things. I'm going to kind of come up with them as I go. And I'm going to write them down in my notebook with my pencil as I do them. And I'm thinking if I keep doing this, it's going to be fine if I just like keep practicing the same things that I learned. Um, because then I'll come back and I'll relearn them. And then they'll be kind of ingrained into my brain in another way. So we're going to try it. <laughs> Here we go. So uh, just like three of these in, I kind of came up with a little system. So you have these two five ones. I'll do it in C, for example. I have like two kind of two five ones that I like to use. This one, and there's also this one. Um, and I kind of knew about those. So like one has a third on the bottom and ends with the third on the bottom. And the other one has a seven on the bottom and ends with the seven on bottom. Um, but I kind of came up with a new little system. I call the one with the, uh, with the three on the bottom, the cone voicing. And I also call these vanilla because like uh, it's major and also um, it's just like the extensions that you would expect. So like there are no alterations or anything. So like this is just a straight up like with a nine and a 13. Um, but this one, is nice because like you've got the pointy bit down here and you got kind of a cluster up here so I call that the ice cream cone voicing and this one um, it's got kind of like this sandwich with the cluster in the middle and it finishes with that uh, so I call that the ice cream sandwich voicing and uh, yeah I kind of like it I think it's a little bit quaint I'm going to keep going. So this is taking a bit longer than I thought. Um, I've been doing this for probably like an hour um, and I've gotten 14. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to 20 and be done for today. But I might do some more tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. All right, so we have 20. Um, this is actually really nice. I kind of like this. So I have my, you know, my little comping voicing, blah, blah, blah. And I have my little right hand licks. Um, so these are just kind of, a lot of these are just kind of names I came up with on the spot for these. But it's cool to practice something and then write it down. And it's, and most of the things were things that uh, were just like really short little ideas. And I think I'm gonna try to build up my vocabulary of very short ideas. And if I have those perfectly, then it's like I have little atoms that I can build molecules with. And those molecules I can build, like, compounds with. And then I can eventually start building, like, objects. And then it'll sound like jazz, hopefully. I practiced a lot of stuff in, in B and E, you know, B and E, I have some minor stuff. Uh, because those are the keys that I'm not very strong in. And I noticed the other day, 
that when I just played like a normal little B major 7 voicing like this or one like this it sounds similar to this but my brain was thrown for a loop because it's used to hearing it in C and I was like whoa this is like otherworldly something I'm not used to and also I kind of think in C and F and B flat I can think in those keys and I can pick out the third and the I can pick out the third and like the seven and all those in those keys but it's much slower in the keys of like E and B and uh, F sharp or G flat or like C sharp so I'm gonna keep trying this I think I'm gonna try it tomorrow maybe not a hundred at a time maybe 20 and maybe if I remember 10% then every day I'll remember two of these things and I'll be building it up that way I don't know we'll try it for we'll try it for a week what is today today is Wednesday we'll try it till next Wednesday try it through Tuesday and see see how we like it and if we like it we'll keep practicing this way I think it's a good way if George Benson says it's good it's got to be at least decent right I don't know we'll try it Okay, so I'm just leaving the music building and I wanted to clarify like what I want to do these videos for. I'd like to do these videos just as kind of an accountability thing to like force myself to to keep practicing and keep practicing efficiently and doing it every day. And that way I have like progress and I show exactly what I'm learning each time. And I also hope if anybody sees these just to show like what it looks like to practice efficiently. One thing that people think when you're practicing is that you have to practice for a long time. And you don't, really. If you're not already in the habit of practicing every day, you really don't have to practice for that long. And I would even recommend, like if you're just starting to practice every day, I would recommend not practicing for more than like 15 or 30 minutes. And I would say if you're just starting, make your commitment to just touch your instrument every day. And if you can't get to an instrument, like for me, I play piano. So like if I'm like on vacation or something, I can't, you know, like I can't just take a piano with me everywhere I go. So just like just do something. And it doesn't have to be long. My goal beginning in 2020 was to just, just touch a piano once every day of 2020 or if I couldn't get to one just think about like music and that way I didn't really have any reason not to like even if you just say practice an hour every day um, when you're just starting that's gonna seem daunting and if you don't do it a whole hour or if you don't have time to chunk out a whole hour you're gonna you're just gonna make an excuse to not do it and that's fine, but there's a much more efficient way to do it. And that's just to hold yourself to just doing whatever would improve you that would only take like one minute. And I'm being, like I'm not even being facetious, like literally one minute. Whatever it takes to be doing something every day. Somebody who tells himself that they'll do one minute every day for a month, at the end of the month, they're going to be a lot farther ahead than somebody who says I'm going to practice for an hour every day for the rest of my life especially when they're just starting the reason for this is when you're just starting you don't have that rhythm built up and so if you if you're try, if you tell yourself you're going to do a whole hour if you don't do it, you're going to beat yourself up for it, and then you're going to not want to do it anymore, so you'll just quit. I think of it like, like if you're trying to start a fire. So like if you have like a campfire pit, you're not just going to like hold your, <laughs> hold your cigarette lighter up to like a big log. Like even if you hold it up to like a twig, it's, you're gonna have a little bit harder of a time starting. So start with like, start with like lighting like a piece of newspaper or like 
some sawdust or something like that. If you can do that and you can keep that fire burning, then you can start adding twigs, you know. But if you start by trying to light a whole log and you're trying to do that every day, you're, it's not going to stick. If anybody comes across these videos, I want to show people that you don't have to you don't have to be doing it for a long time every day, but do it every day. If I can make YouTube videos where somebody, it might be you, uh, says, oh, that's cool, and it kind of inspires them and gives them an idea for something that they can do right then, um, just in their real life. Like, it doesn't have to be with music, it can be with anything. Whatever kind of gets you going, if I can inspire somebody to to get off of YouTube and stop watching videos and go do that, then I'll have done my job. Because my favorite videos are the ones that that inspire me and kind of they kind of leave me like, oh, yeah, like like I'm kind of like sick of YouTube now. Like I want to go do something cool, you know. Uh, anywho, I hope this has left you with a good message. Please enter the tone after the dot.